Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Cutting the Cord, Exploring Traditional Cable Alternatives. My name is Lydia Nimke, and I've been doing adult programming at the Baby Branch of the Milwaukee Public Library for three years now. Um, we also have Beth Gabriel from the East Branch. She's going to be our behind the scenes woman, answering all your technical questions um, and asking questions at the end of the program. Thanks, Beth. So have a good just, one. I'm going to turn my camera off now, but feel free to use that Q&A box if you do need anything. Have a good absolutely. program. So just to give you a little information about the structure of the program, I have around 30 minutes of presentation lined up for you guys, and we'll discuss internet speed, hardware, TV ser or streaming services, and how to make smart purchasing decisions around all of this. Of course, there'll be time at the end for questions, but you can send them in at any time through the questions panel located on your computer screen or your device screen. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, again, please let us know, and we'll get started. I'm just going to shut off my camera, and we'll focus on the presentation. So to begin, cutting the cord is a growing trend among adults in America, where they no longer utilize traditional wired cable and instead have moved over to using exclusively streaming services such as Netflix and Hulu for their television viewing content. And this is done a lot in the process of downsizing in older adulthood. And many young adults, myself included in this category, have never subscribed to cable television at all. This presentation will um, provide you with a basic overview of what you need to know to do and do to save money by cutting the cord. So your first step is to check your internet speed. Internet speed is measured in megabits per second, and the recommended speed is five megabits per person per device, right? So for me and my husband, we live alone in our house, so it would be recommended that we have at least 10 megabits per second. You can check your internet speed at either of these websites here or you can just google uh, internet speed test and a widget will pop up that you can use so your next step after you determine your internet speed is to choose your hardware decide how you want to stream content to your tv there are three basic options for this a smart tv a dongle a laptop and an hdmi cable and those all have their different pros and cons, and we'll get into that more on some of the following slides. So smart TVs. Smart TVs are TVs that use apps to access different streaming services like Hulu or Netflix. They connect to the internet via an ethernet cable or via Wi-Fi, so they can be wired or on your wireless network. They can go online, but just know it's not going to be the same user experience as your computer, and it's not going to have the same security settings. So you want to be, as always, cautious with doing that. Some apps will come pre-installed on a smart TV, especially the, the big guys, but not all. Um, and if they are not available uh, pre-installed, you can potentially download them through your onboard app store and your smart TV. And not every streaming service has an app for every smart TV. So that is something you would want to look into. Next, we have dongles. So if you already have a flat screen TV and you want to make it smart, you can do that with a dongle. Dongles plug into your HDMI ports that look like this. Here's a picture for you. And there are four main contenders in this space. We have Google, Amazon, Apple, and Roku. So first up, we have Google. And Google offers the Chromecast and the Chromecast Ultra. We hit 
the Chromecast has HD video, standard HD video, and the Ultra has HD and 4K. And the Google Chromecast is controlled all with your smartphone. So that is an important feature of the Google Chromecast. You cast what's on your phone to the TV. Not every app can cast, and if you don't you know, have a smartphone, this is probably not gonna be the best option for you. If you don't like using your smartphone for things like of this nature, again, not gonna be the best option. However, if you always have your smartphone in your hand while you're watching TV, um, or you think a remote is just another thing for you to lose in the couch cushions, this might be a great option. And now I do have to add this disclaimer in here. The prices that you'll see throughout this presentation are as accurate as possible as I could get them as of the date of this presentation. Actual pricing may vary. So if you go and look at this uh, Chromecast device uh, on Black Friday, chances are you'll be able to get a really good deal on it. Or if they add extra features in the next six months or so, it, the cost may go up. So just remember that these prices are just to give you a general idea of you know, what you could look to spend on a certain device or service. They are not set in stone. Up next, we have the Amazon Fire Stick, um, which has a range of pricing and a range of services. The standard stick has HD video and the 4K stick has HD and 4K. Fire Stick comes with remotes and voice activation. They are purely for streaming. Along with that, they also, we also have the Fire TV Cube, which is a little bit more expensive, but it has everything that the Fire Stick does, as well as Alexa support. So you can do those smart home commands from your Fire TV Cube. You can ask her to turn on the TV and open up Netflix for you, which could be a really cool feature. Then we have Apple. Apple TV is our most expensive option for cutting the cord um, hardware. It does offer HD video and the 4K version offers HD and 4K, but its main differentiator is that you can sync content and setting across multiple devices, right? So if you are um, an Apple household, you have your iPhone and your iPad and all that good stuff, and you want to kind of stay in the same ecosystem, an Apple TV would be a great option for you. Apple TV also comes with a remote and voice activation. And finally, we have the Roku. Um, Roku has a Premiere and a Premiere Plus option. Both offer HD and 4K. They both have remotes and the Premiere Plus has voice activation. Roku also offers the streaming stick, which has everything above and it just plugs directly into your TV. So if you have like a wall mounted TV that you were looking to use and you, or you just wanna keep your console or entertainment center area clear, streaming stick, those sort of options are gonna be something you wanna look more closely at. I personally have a Roku, so I can answer questions about this one a little bit more in depth than I can the others, but I know. And as another option, we have the laptop and the HDMI cable. So you'll directly connect your laptop to your TV with an HDMI cable. And HDMI cables are really expense inexpensive, so I think this is probably the one with the lowest, like, barrier to entry of um, all of them, because a lot of households may already have these just laying around their home. Essentially, what you're going to do is mirror your computer screen onto your television. You can browse Netflix and play shows and movies just like you would as if you were watching them from your laptop. There are some downsides. The laptop probably has to be placed relatively close to the TV. Um, and you may have to walk across the room to change episodes unless you have a wireless keyboard or a mouse. But I did just look into it, uh, and a 10-foot HDMI cord is like $15, so take that information for what you will. Um, also, because you're using the broader internet and not a specific app, or you are unlikely to run into the issue that your app or your service is not supported on your TV or dongle. 
So those are all of our hardware options. And up next, we'll choose your subscriptions. What streaming services do you want, right? There are two um, distinctions in the streaming service world. The first is on-demand streaming services. These feature shows that are released either episode by episode, the day after they air, or shows released all at once after the season finale airs. The other side of that coin is live streaming services. These are for your sports, your talk shows, your news, um, kind of mirroring that cable um, environment. So to begin, we'll talk about our on-demand streaming services. Um, there are three big players that we'll discuss, Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime Video. And then I also just threw in the new kid on the block, Disney+. Plus. I guess it's not so new anymore. It's been out since last November, but it's really been, you know, shaking up the game, I guess. So up first, we have Hulu. Hulu ranges from $6 to $12. It's owned by Disney. It has streaming agreements with NBC, ABC, Fox, and new episodes are uploaded the day after they air live. It has back catalogs of those network uh, shows and other shows like Seinfeld. Um, it also has original programming like The Handmaid's Tale. It has a bunch of really good original programming. Then we have Netflix, which is $9 a month for standard definition and up to $16 a month for 4K. Also at the low end of the spectrum with Netflix, you have like one screen to stream at a time. And then at the high end for like $16 a month, you can stream up to four screens at, simultaneously. Netflix is independently owned, but it does have streaming agreements as well. And in general, new seasons of shows are uploaded sometime after the finale airs. This has changed a little bit recently in that Netflix for their own um, original content, it may upload once a week or several times a week. It all depends on the show. It does have an awesome back catalog of a lot of great network shows like Friends, um, Frasier, Parks and Recreation, and there is tons and tons of original programming on Netflix from every genre, reality TV, dramas, mysteries, um, every single area, Netflix has something for you to watch. And then we have Amazon Prime Video. Amazon Prime Video is $9 a month for just Amazon Prime Video and $119 a year for all of Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime Video is actually a perk uh, afforded to Amazon Prime members. So if you already have Amazon Prime, you have Amazon Prime Video. I know those numbers don't quite add up to, to make sense, but the $119 a year is for all of Amazon Prime. So that also includes um, your free two-day shipping, your uh, Amazon Prime Music, your access to the Kindle Lending Library. It includes a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's not just for the video, but if you don't have Amazon Prime and you want the video service, you can buy that separately for $9 a month. Obviously, it's owned by Amazon and it does have streaming agreements with some major networks. And the upload schedule really varies on this one. It does have back catalogs of a lot of network shows like The Sopranos and it offers its own original programming as well, like The Marvelous Miss Maisel and Jack Ryan. And then finally, we have Disney Plus, which is $7 a month or $70 a year. It's owned by Disney again. And it has a huge back catalog of Disney shows, uh, Disney Channel original movies, almost all the Marvel movies, and a lot of vaulted Disney classics are on there. Um, and a lot of kid-friendly content as well. Disney Plus also has original programming like The Mandalorian and Encore. So 
some channels will offer separate digital subscription packages. Um, I'm sure you've heard of HBO's digital package, HBO Max, or CBS All Access and PBS Passport. And the prices really do vary with that. However, with Amazon Prime Video, you can subscribe to many of these for an extra $5 to $15 extra per channel every month. So that's nice that you can add that on. And also with Hulu, you can subscribe to Showtime, Cinemax, and um, HBO for an extra $9 to $15 a month per channel. Moving from on-demand streaming services to live streaming services, there are three big players in this field as well. We have Hulu Live, YouTube TV, and Sling. Hulu Live comes in around $55 a month and includes the Hulu On Demand library and select live channels. So everything I said about Hulu on the previous slide is also included in this subscription cost of $55 a month for Hulu Live. It has a lot of channels, but not Viacom. Again, you have access to those local networks, ABC, CBS, Telemundo, and it includes 50 hours of cloud DVR. It's available on computers, smartphones, your dongles, Samsung, Vizio, and LG smart TVs. So for any limited DVR like this one, once you reach your limit, the service will begin deleting your oldest content to make room for the new content. Next, we have YouTube TV, which comes in around $65 a month. It has, again, many channels, but not Viacom. Same local networks, but with the addition of the CW. Unlimited cloud DVR is included. So that is nice if you know you're going to, you know, fill up 50 hours at the drop of a hat. You like to record your shows, but don't necessarily like to watch them all live. YouTube TV has an advantage in that field. It is available on computers, smartphones, dongles, and several smart TVs. But again, that is something you'd want to check prior to a purchase. And then we have Sling. Sling is um, on the lower end as far as the cost spectrum goes. It's available for $30 a month, and it has an orange and a blue package. Blue is more for news and entertainment, where orange is tailored more for sports and families. 10 hours of DVR comes standard with Sling, and it has a lot of the same channel availability as the previous two. It is available on your computers, smartphones, dongles, and LG smart TVs specifically. You can also explore getting live TV with an antenna. It can be tricky, but if you are in a good service area and you can get one to work, you get free access to live TV. So there's no monthly subscription. There's just the initial cost fee for you to buy the actual antenna. And then you don't have to pay a monthly subscription fee. Of course, there are local affiliates and some network and cha channels included with that. If you visit the FCC website and look for their DTV reception maps, the digital television reception maps, you can get a pretty solid idea of what local channels will be available to you. So here's a screenshot of what that looks like for my area. I have a lot of strong signals and around five weak signals that aren't pictured. If you check your coverage and find that a lot of the channels you view are available for free, and have a strong signal at your address, an antenna might be a great cord cutting solution for you. For the indoor antennas, one end will attach to an interior wall or window where the other end plugs into your TV's coaxial port and they are pictured below there. 
It's important to remember that you might not pick up every channel you want with an antenna, so make sure that you have a forgiving return policy and you keep that receipt, right? Keep that receipt until you hook it up and see what all channels you can get from it. Also, check out your consumer reports. The library has a free subscription to consumer reports that you can come in and ask to view um, before you make any purchases. There also is no price that I included for indoor antennas because they really, really vary. They can be anywhere from like $15 at the low end to like $250 at the high end. So whatever works for you in that situation. So just to kind of recap what we've gone over so far, you first will want to check your internet speed. That's five megabits per second per person per device. Okay, so if you have a person in your household who's regularly, you know, watching YouTube while they're streaming something on Netflix, that is a 10 megabits per second interaction there. So if there's four people in your house, 20 megabits per second is the baseline minimum of what you would need. If you find when you do your internet speed tests that your internet is too slow to support your streaming for your household, you're gonna to wanna to contact your internet service provider to try and get an upgrade. Try and see if you can get a sweet deal. We also went over choosing your hardware. We discussed smart TVs, dongles, and laptops connected to your television with an HDMI cable. We also discussed your subscriptions. We went over on-demand subscriptions like Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus. And then we also discussed live subscriptions like Hulu Live, YouTube TV, Sling, or an indoor antenna. So a big question is, how do you choose? Of course, you'll wanna consider your budget. First and foremost, whatever works for you, there's probably a solution that you could find if you really want to get rid of your cable bill. You're also gonna to wanna to consider ease of use. Um, like with the Chromecast, uh, if you simply have no interest in using your smartphone as a remote to cast to your television, Chromecast is not gonna be your cutting the cord alternative, right? Um, also, as far as accessibility goes, if you have someone in your household who's visually impaired, you might really want those voice um, enabled options options, those voice control enable options. You're also going to want to consider how you currently use your TV. Are you using it mainly for big sports gatherings or sports watching parties or you just using it to watch movies with the family? You're really going to want to honestly assess that as well as what shows and channels you watch the most. I love uh, HGTV, DIY network. So if I were looking into live streaming options, if there was no, you know, HGTV or DIY type of, of channel or option that I could get, I would know that that streaming service wouldn't be for me. Also, I, I really don't watch sports in my house. So a sports package with Sling is not gonna be, you know, an option that I would find useful, right? It all depends on you. It's so um, particular to exactly what you're hoping to get from cutting cord. You're also gonna wanna look at reviews online. Online reviews will be the most up-to-date. And these are three good resources for, for reviews on dongles, smart TVs, and services as well. It'll show you a comparison between one and the other. If you're debating going back and forth between two different options, you can take a look at these and they will maybe maybe sway you one direction or another. You can also take a look at YouTube and find video reviews of different smart TVs and dongles. Oftentimes you, you'll find a person even in setting it up if you had questions about setup specifically. 
And the final resource you guys can check out is um, untangle.tv, which is specifically for cord cutters. Uh, it puts everything in that lens of you're getting rid of cable. How do you not change your viewing habits that much and just switch over to a different service? And then there's us. Wouldn't be a, a library program if I didn't, you know, tell you guys about the services that we offer, right? So we have Hoopla, where you can check out and stream up to four titles a month. Hoopla is an app connected to your library account, and you can get the Hoopla app installed on some brands of smart TV and popular dongles like Roku. They have uh, TV, movies, music, books. It does have a limited selection, but there are truly some gems on there, so I encourage you to take a look and check it out. We also have a huge, huge collection of DVDs. TV shows are typically released on DVD or Blu-ray a few months after the season finale air. So come put it on hold with us, please. And same goes for movies. A couple of months after it's out of theaters, we usually have a record for it and can put it on hold for you. And all of our DVDs have a seven day checkout period. Um, and if there are no holds on it, you can renew it up to two more times. So that's three weeks you could spend with your favorite TV series or movie. All righty. So we've reached the end of our presentation. Um, I want to thank you guys all so much for attending. Next week's Tech Tuesday's topic is an overview of LinkedIn. So I hope that some of you will join us for that program as well. I am definitely aware that I didn't cover every single use case in this presentation, but this is just a general overview um, of information that you'll need to take into consideration if you plan on cutting the cord. You might have a specific circumstance or issue that you've experienced that I'm not aware of, but that someone else in attendance today might have. So feel free to share. If you have any questions or comments about the presentation, please type them into the question box and Beth will read them out loud. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone. Um, I have one question to start. Let me just pull that up here. Sorry, I accidentally closed that box. There we go. Okay, Lydia, can you talk about routers? How to choose cost comparisons of owning versus renting? How long do they last? How do you know when they're starting to fail? So let me know if you want me to repeat anything. Sure. You know, I can't talk about routers. That's a little bit beyond the scope. I could find out about routers and get back to you, Mary, I think. Um, yeah, I can't talk about routers right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. That's all right. So, Mary, we will get back to you with some more information about that. Um, okay. Absolutely. It looks like Karen is just saying great presentation. Very informative. Thank you. Thank Mary you. Mary said, thank you. That's great. Um, does anybody else have a question? You can type it in the question box. And I know while we're waiting for questions to roll in, we had the slide up earlier while people were arriving, but please do remember to fill out your census if you've not done so already. I'm going to drop the link for that into the chat. Um, it's due by September 30th, so please make sure to fill that out for your households. Um, we're trying to get the message out because we want everybody to be counted. Um, and then another person is asking, will we have access to the handouts? Absolutely. Um, if you look in the handouts pane or panel, um, you have the cut the cable take home handout, which is all of the information that's in the presentation, just not in a PowerPoint format. So it's essentially like if you were taking notes on every slide. Um, and then I also have a document um, Cutting the Cable Cord Providers 2020. Looks like this, more or less. Um, and that just details the different devices and the different services we went over um, a little bit more specifically. Oh, yes. Thank you for asking. 
Excellent. All right. It looks like Daniel has a question. Um, is the OWN network on Hulu Live? I don't know offhand, Daniel. I will look it up and tell you. Awesome. Very good. We'll look that up while we're going. And then yeah. um, Jane is just saying thank you for a great presentation. It was really helpful. Thanks for coming, Jane. Thank you. And that looks like all the questions for now. Um, again, I'm dropping the link in for the census. Um, Daniel has another question. What app does the Hoopla movies play in? Sure. So Hoopla has its own standalone app called Hoopla um, or Hoopla Digital, depending on where you look. Um, but if you search Hoopla on whatever app store you have access to, it should be the first to pop up. It's a white writing on a blue background. Um, and I don't see own with uh, Hulu Live to answer your question from earlier, Daniel. Thank you for your questions. And with the Hoopla app, um, library staff is more than willing to help you a little bit more, uh, more intensely than with the other ones because, you know, that's our app. We, we, you know, pay for that one. We know a lot more about it than the others. So we can help you get it set up on your phone and kind of, you know, give you a little bit more help towards setting that one up on your TV or your dongle. Very good. Um, Margo, again, thank you. Nicely organized and comprehensive. And that looks to be about it for questions. Um, I do use the Hoopla app myself and it works really great. So I especially like using it on my laptop while I'm hanging out in my room by myself. <laughs> Absolutely. As opposed to my TV. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all again so much for coming. Um, and we'll see you next week, hopefully. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.